right here in Independence, Kentucky, and so glad you have joined us today for the call to prayer. Today we're going to believe that God's going to send us some mercy drops from heaven. Some mercy drops from heaven. I'll explain a little more. This old song was written about 1912, and they sang it at my great-grandmother's church, Oak Ridge Baptist. And they sang it at my great-grandma Sizemore's church, which was holiness. The people agreed that they needed blessings. We talk about blessings. Healing is a blessing. Deliverance is a blessing. Sometimes we say the word blessing. We're so quick to connect it to material things. I've been blessed with a car. I've been blessed with a house. I've been blessed with new clothes. Those are blessings. But let me tell you something else. If you're sick and healing comes by your house tonight, that's a blessing. If someone you've been praying for that seems so far from God, but after this prayer tonight, you get a text message or a phone call that says, I think I'll go to church with you this weekend. Or, I've been reading my Bible. I've been thinking about the things I was taught in Sunday school. That's a blessing. After this prayer tonight, if someone's chains of bondage, addictions are broken, that's a blessing. We're believing tonight that the blessing of the latter rain is going to fall upon the people of God. As I said, this song was sung at my great-grandma's church, Oak Ridge Baptist, and my other great-grandma, the holiness people. There shall be, not think so, maybe so, or hope so. We're going to another level of faith tonight. Hallelujah. We fought death last night. I don't know if, if you were on last night. If you weren't, we were praying Psalms chapter 30. We were in a warfare with death, that enemy himself. The Bible said death is an enemy that we all will face. And we were fighting death last night. And I believe we got some victories. All oh, glory to God. There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Oh, showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Oh, showers of blessings, showers of blessings we plead. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be Showers of blessings, send them up on us, O oh Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word, O oh shall words of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. 
but for the showers we plead. Sing it with me. Oh, showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. You see, tonight, I'm believing those mercy drops, mercy drops, are going to fall. I was texting Pastor Gary Wiggins in the Evangel Temple Assembly of God in Jacksonville, Florida. He's been taking treatments. He said, believe with me, Mark 16, that no deadly thing shall harm me. I said, Brother Gary, we're going to believe God for that. Last night we had 9,200 people that were over 200 people, 9,200 and something, that were engaged in this prayer meeting. I don't know how many is with us tonight, whether it be two or three, that's all it takes. If two or more are gathered in his name, there he is. We're going to believe tonight that clouds, clouds, and we're going to talk about that, pray that tonight, are going to form over hospital rooms, over homes, inside churches, and the abundance of those mercy drops are going to fall. Every drop of blessing is going to say, mercy, mercy, hallelujah. There shall be showers of blessings oh that today they might fall now as to God we're confessing now as on Jesus we call oh shall words of Hours of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Let's do that last verse one more time. Can we believe that tonight? I'm believing tonight that a mercy drop's gonna touch my Aunt Pam that's had COVID. That right now tonight a mercy drop a mercy drop's gonna hit her on the forehead and push that COVID out of her body. Not only her, but we have a list that long of people who are in the church and related to friends and neighbors who've been attacked by this manipulative evil virus. And in the name of Jesus. I'm pleading for the mercy of God. The mercy of God. Hallelujah. There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus. Jesus we call, oh, showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need, mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I believe with all of my heart that's going to happen tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to look at the tabernacle, and I want you to know where we're headed. Because we're going to get into this, and I want you to get this revelation. As we look at the tabernacle, we've come through one gate. And that gate is the Lord Jesus Christ. And right now as we come in the name of Jesus, Father, progenitor of life, 
We, as the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the building of Christ, we enter into this incredible, awesome experience through the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As we speak the name of Jesus, this door opens wide and allows us to go into the unseen world, allows us to step into the dimension of angels, of the spirits of just men made perfect, of God our righteous Father, of Jesus Christ, the mediator of a new and a better covenant. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for the innumerable company of angels that are assisting us right now, according to Hebrews 1 and 14. As we enter into this gate into the very supernatural of the unseen world, we stop at that brazen altar, Lord, and we realize we're only flesh and blood. We are only flesh and blood. We're nothing but a house of clay with passions and lust and faults and failures and so many things that would pull us down like gravitational pull. But you have chosen our body. You purchased us with your own blood. We are bought with a price. <laughs> Therefore, I will glorify God in my spirit and in my body, which belong to the Lord. My body belongs to you, even though it's full of human weaknesses, even though it's full of of the lack of potential it's full of many things that we cannot do you have chosen this earthen vessel for the pearl of great price to dwell for that one that treasure to live inside of us you have given us the promise of the father and with that promise we confess our sins our weaknesses and we boldly come into the throne of grace. We boldly come into the throne of grace, not by our own righteousness, but by the righteousness of the redemption of the blood of Jesus that covers all of our sins, past, present, and future. And Lord, we come to that labor, the word of God. Let this prayer tonight penetrate our our hearts with the word sanctify us with the word with the washing of water by the word of God that we may be your bride without spot and without wrinkle and Lord as we come into the holy place the holy place Lord let the igniting of the Holy Spirit and the illumination of the Holy Ghost lead us into this this prayer, oh, lead us into the dimensions that goes beyond what this world can see and what this world can hear. Holy Spirit, take us into the dimensions of the unseen world. Oh, let us hear things that we cannot hear with this natural ear. Let us see things tonight night uh, that we cannot see uh, with the natural eye. Oh, let your word, God, uh, begin to penetrate uh, and begin to come through our spirit uh, and let the word of the Lord uh, come out of our mouth, God, uh, as we take the sword of the spirit and we go into the enemy's territory and the hiding places uh, of the powers of darkness uh, as we go into the crevices and the places of darkness as we call up 
want demonic spirits that have been hid too long, spirits of jealousy, spirits of manipulation, spirits of bondage, spirits of addiction that have hid themselves in the secret chambers. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, let us venture by your power into those secret chambers. Let us call up those demonic powers that have ruled in strongholds, strongholds of deception, those that have prophesied and speak swelling great words, but yet their testimony does not stand sure. In the name of Jesus, you've purged us with your blood. You've ignited us, Lord, just like going into a cave, into a cave of darkness. You've given us the torch of the Holy Spirit. You've given us the sword of the Holy Ghost. And now, with the flaming fire of the Holy Ghost, with the candlestick of righteousness, we walk into the chambers of darkness. We walk in to the secret hidden places of the demonic powers of hell. And God, in the name of Jesus, show us, show us, Lord. Oh, show us the strongholds, the strongholds over our families, the strongholds over the states of the United States, the strongholds over nations, Lord. Oh, my Savior, my Redeemer, and my King. Oh, take us into the hidden chambers in this prayer tonight. Reveal unto us those powers of darkness that have kept the people from praising your name, that keep the people occupied. Lord, we've been in this pandemic since March and since March. God, it seems like that the strongholds of hell are still keeping the people with their mouths sealed, not praying and speaking the word of God. Oh Lord, there's a few that come at a social gathering for a few minutes of prayer. But God, you want this thing to be private and you want it to be individual and you're calling your people that sit on your pews that come to your house to shake off this weary spirit of intimidation. Oh God, they've got boldness to yell and scream at a sports event. They've got boldness to vocalize their opinion on a political platform. But Lord, when it comes to going into the secret hidden chambers of the unseen world, the demonic powers have their minds so boggled that they feel like they're not qualified. They feel qualified, Lord, to say things in the in the natural. But when it comes to the spiritual, oh Lord, they feel intimidated and unworthy. But tonight, God, whether there be few or whether there be many, it was my heart's desire. Lord, back when we call, had the call to prayer, we saw it get into 12, 13,000 people. But it wasn't long, Lord. It wasn't long to those numbers. There was a two or 3,000 decline, not a two or 3,000 increase. Lord, this is what's going on among your people. Your people have become lazy. They've become lethargic. They're sleeping in the harvest. And oh, God, as I come into these secret chambers of prayer, I'm asking you, Lord, quicken us. Quicken us, oh Lord. Shake us. Shake everything that can be shaken. Oh, shake us, oh Lord. Oh, let our houses, let God, those that are called by your name, that claim a born-again experience, 
that don't even bow their heads to ask thanks over the food that they eat. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, come against this spirit of pride. Come against this arrogant spirit that's got a hold of your people that's called by your name. Oh Lord, in their homes tonight, in front of their iPads, let this not just be a watching of me pleading out my heart before you, but God help them tonight to make a spiritual advance. They've sat in the high chair too long. Oh God, they've eaten baby food too long. They've nursed at the bottle too long. They've shirt tailed the preacher's religion too long. They've hung on to grandma's experience too long. And God, you're calling every young man that is a father to take his position as a high priest in his family and to shake off this intimidation and to stand as bold as a lion and rebuke the devourer off of his children. Rebuke the devourer off of his family. God, you're calling every mother. Oh, God, every woman that's got time for the nails, got time for the hair, got time for the workout, got time for the exercise, got time for the movie, got time for the Netflix. Shake that mother, Lord. Let her know her children are at stake. Her family are at stake. Lord, let the dry eyes of the American church weep with bitter tears. Let us plead, God. Oh, let us plead with fervency. Let the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous avail much. God, I know we can't preach with such intensity as I'm praying tonight because there are so many that are infants in the presence of God. They've never been able to develop. But those of us who have come into this prayer chamber, God, let this not be just a time of listening and saying, I come in agreement. But let it be a shakening of everyone that's here. Shake every daddy and let him be the priest of his home. Shake every mother and let her be the protector of her children not just in the natural but in the spiritual oh Lord oh God every teenager Lord that professes your name that has time for that cell phone has time for Netflix has time for WhatsApp has time for chats oh God help them to take that technology and lay it down and find an intimate relationship with you. Oh Lord, we're going into the dark places tonight. Oh God, we're going into the caverns of the bound, the caverns of the bound. Your people do not give you the glory that's due your name. Oh God, oh take us into the caverns of the dark places. Oh, reveal us, Lord. Oh, reveal to us, God. Shake those chains that's keeping the people in bondage. Those that do not count it a joy to be separate and to look separate and to live separate and to talk separate and to dress separate. God, Hollywood is not my Savior and this world system is not my God. I have no desire to pattern after the fashions of this world, Lord. Oh, I have no desire to pattern my speech after the speech of this world's Hollywood of performers in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, as we go into the caverns of the darkness, Lord, oh, shake your church tonight. Shake us in a way that we need to be shaken. God, we bind the devil over the presidency. We bind the devil over abortion. But do we bind the 
devil over what we say and what we wear? Do we bind the devil over hands that will not raise and praise you? Do we bind the devil that's locked our jaws to where we do not intercede for the lost and pray without ceasing and have a fervent effectual prayer that will shake the very powers of darkness? Oh, devil, you heard me. I'm coming after you tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the light of the Holy Spirit shake you out of your places of darkness. The church is going to develop. The church is going to come up another level of faith tonight. The church is going to come another step higher tonight. Your people which are called by your name are going to loose their tongue. They're going to loose their hands. They're going to loose their feet. They're going to loose their voice. And they're going to trample on the thresholds of the powers of darkness and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Oh, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory. I said we give you praise, we give you glory. We give you praise, we give you glory. Right now is a good time to clap your hands and shout. Woo! Woo! That's what a Shabbat is. Woo! Whoa, somebody said, I'll sound stupid. You don't care if you sound stupid at a ball game. Turn your praise loose. Turn your shout loose. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. 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 Every bit of that was unexpected. I said every bit of that was unexpected because I, I was going somewhere and I'm going to get there maybe and I may not. I said I may get there and I may not because the Holy Ghost is dealing with the church right now. I've got a lesson, but I don't even know if I'm going to get there or not. It's not a lesson. It's a prayer lesson. But right now, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, oh God, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, don't stop your glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we take that torch of the golden candlestick and we go into the dark places, somebody said, I don't even understand what you're saying going into the dark places. Where do you think a thief is? You think he's sitting at the dinner table with you? Where do you think the liar is? You think he's sitting there where you can see him? No, he's hiding. He's hiding in secret places. Oh, God. And we're going after everything that's hindering the church from moving forward. Oh, in the name of Jesus. As you look, let's go back to the tabernacle and try it again see what happens. Hallelujah. We go into this holy place. The candlestick gives us the enlightenment and the direction. The table of shoe bread. There's two pieces of loaves of bread. If you look on there, there was 12 12 loaves and 12 loaves. One represents the living word. The other one represents the written word. Hallelujah. Everything is backed by this word. If you give a prophecy and it does not balance out without this word, guess what? You're wrong and God's right. There is no private interpretation. There is no private interpretation. The Bible, the Word of God, interprets itself. The Scripture explains and interprets itself. Now we come before the golden altar. And this is where this prayer is going to take a, maybe going to take another level. If I got anybody still out there with me. I guess after we got to dealing with all that lazy, lethargic stuff. Sometimes people get upset. They don't want to hear it. They just want to stick another pacifier in their mouth and go right on, get back in that high chair and spit up some more baby food. But we are an intense prayer. Our country needs intense prayer, not repetitious sayings over and over, not somebody screaming and acting a fool. Open up this Bible. You cannot go wrong by praying this Bible. You will not go wrong by opening up your mouth and praying this scripture. When you get to the golden altar, look at it real good. The golden altar, it's the altar of incense. 
because incense goes up. It's associated sometimes called vapor. Vapor and incense, they're interchangeable words. They go up. They go up unto God. The incense in the Old Covenant in Exodus chapter 30 was Galbanum stacked in Annika. Spirit, soul, and body. Don't have time to give you a complete Hebrew breakdown. Just, just hang with me, all right? And you mix those three with frankincense. Frankincense was given to Jesus at his birth. It represents the restoration of my will, mind, and emotion. So when we get to this golden altar, it is the Holy Spirit using the written word and the living word. Hallelujah. The woman at the well said, you Jews go here and you do this. And Jesus said, there's an hour coming. It's not where you go and what you do, but who you know. Because the Father seeks such to worship him in the candlestick and in the table of shoe bread. For the Father seeks such that worship him in spirit and in truth. So spirit and truth must come together and embrace before you ever get to that golden altar. Do you hear me tonight? Now we have the presence of God in us. But what we are here and what I am on the internet for and what we are online, we want the manifestation of the glory that is in the Holy of Holies to be released. We want it to be released. Christ is in us, but we want His glory to be released. I want to see my Aunt Pam, Kevin Lochman, Darlene Dixon, I could go on and on. The names are so many. I want to see them come out of that hospital. I want mercy rain drops to drop on my haloritia, drop on their forehead. That's why we want mercy, mercy, mercy. God, we know without you it takes the spirit It takes the table of shoe bread, the written word and the living word, the written word, the living word, the written word, the living word. It takes the word with the torch of the spirit. Then you get to this golden altar and with your spirit, soul, and body. That's all right. That's why wherever you are, if you're in this sanctuary tonight with me, no matter where you are, this, you, you, you put your body, your soul, and your spirit. You clap your hands. You leap for joy. You, you twirl. You, you move back and forth just like they do at that wailing wall. It's not something you're doing as an act of an exercise. What I'm doing right now isn't something I'm trying to exercise to, to make myself more physically fit this is a compelling of the spirit this is a rocking of the spirit this is something on the inside it's a compulsing spirit on the inside that lets us know the urgency but you got to understand when this incense when the Holy Spirit and the living word and written word are combined and we come to this golden altar this is the prerequisite before the release of the Shekinah glory it is a prerequisite there would not be any release according to this Old Testament tabernacle of any type of manifestation of glory until incense was first offered incense and vapor are the same they're interchangeable vapor going up and I want you to see a scripture one of the oldest scriptures it's older than the book of Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers it's older than older than that those were inscribed by Moses by the revelation of God but this book of Job is a time of patriarchs there was no tabernacle there was no Hebrew nation there was no covenant with Abraham but yet God began to speak and he begins to give Job this spiritual divine spiritual revelation through nature God speaks to us through nature and this is what he says He says, for he makes small the drops of water. Do we want mercy drops to fall? 
I said, do we want mercy drops to fall? You watching out there on your iPad say, amen. I want a mercy drop to fall on those in the hospital, those in their homes, those that are bound by addiction. I want, he said, for God makes small the drops of water. They pour down, oh, glory to God. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we have a pour down tonight? Oh, God, I want to pour down. They pour down rain. They pour down rain according to the vapor, according to the incense, according to evaporation. He is using a natural phenomenon to bring forth a spiritual truth. Oh, they pour down rain according to the vapor. Everybody wants the rain, but nobody, not nobody, everybody wants the rain, but very few people have the revelation of the incense. Very few people have the revelation of the vapor. Very few people have the revelation of evaporation. The sun is on the throne the son of righteousness reigns. The son is drawing, he's drawing, he's drawing. That's called evaporation. But what is he drawing? Is he drawing a church that has 4,000 and you got three little elderly women that give up a little vapor? You think you're going to get an abundance of rain out of that? A church that runs 4,000? You can get 4,000 on a Sunday morning, but you call a prayer meeting and you can't get five people you think you're going to get any rain out of that you can call a gospel music concert to come in get the latest name you have to have tickets and reserve seats but you say tonight we're going to have evaporation we're going to send up vapor and incense and the reason why they don't come is they just don't even know how to do it how in the world do I send up vapor how in the world do I send up incense how in the world, and this is where we've got to grow up uh, into the mature men and women of God. Uh, we've got to get out of that baby chair. Uh, we've got to get off of this bottle and begin uh, to send up the vapor. Oh, the Bible said, uh, ah, they pour. What pours? Uh, these drops of water, these drops, these mercy drops. Uh, oh, you see how you can get on one verse and pray it for 20, 30 minutes. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh, God. I know there's a lot of people caught up in religious aestheticism. Somebody said, what's that? It's when you just start saying things over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And you, and you, you work yourself up into a frenzy. And it might be in the Bible. And it might not be in the Bible. That's emotional uh, uh, aestheticism. It, it's, it's trying to work up an emotion. But you don't... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. I try to be calm. You can't work up an emotion when it's the Word of God. I said you can't even work up an emotion. It shoots out of you like lava out of a volcano. And it will not stop. Oh God. Lord poured down rain according to the vapor thereof. Which the clouds, the natural clouds, they do drop and distill. What's the word distill? It means vapor. Vapor. It means evaporation has come. It's hit the cloud. Now the cloud is turning what went up back into rain. What went up was evaporation. But what's coming down is rain. And the Bible said, The clouds do drop and distill upon man abundantly. Oh, Lord, have mercy. If I wasn't confined to this chair, if I didn't have to sit in front of this camera, I'd be running all over this house. All 64 years of me, I'd be shouting and dancing all over the place because he said, according to the vapor, it will distill upon man abundantly. If we are going to see mercy drops of deliverance, mercy drops of healing, mercy drops of old-fashioned conviction, mercy drops of 
the power of God, then there must be evaporation. There must be incense. And incense and vapor are interchangeable words. I haven't even got to the scripture in the book of Revelation. I don't know if I'm even going to get there or not because it seems like the Holy Ghost is just taking this thing real slow but real rich tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It says also, also can any understand the spreading of the class as also, which means I, I've said these things in the natural. Now also can any understand the spreading of the clouds or the noise of his tabernacle. I'm going to stop on that one right there. He jumped out of the natural into the spiritual. Also, also, can any under, anyone understand the spreading of the clouds? God, you said if any man ask of wisdom, you give to all men liberally and you don't hold anything back. Reveal right now to the thousands or the two or three, whoever's caught up into this prayer meeting tonight, reveal unto us the understanding of the spreading of the clouds. That's why you must have prayer meetings either in your home or with your families. Everywhere you can have a prayer meeting, have a prayer meeting. If you can't get to the house of God and during COVID, we can't do that. But my Lord God Almighty, this has been the most perfect time that you can sit right out in your yard with two or three of you. Lift your hands toward heaven and let your neighbors know you're spreading the clouds. I said you're spreading the clouds. You're spreading the clouds. That's why the church has got to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. We grumble and we complain. Why is not the rain stopping the COVID? Why is not the rain keeping us well healthy? Why isn't the rain? Why isn't the rain pouring a healing and deliverance? Why isn't the rain driving this person out or driving the devil out? Why isn't the rain? We are never going to get the rain until we understand how to spread the clouds. We've got to understand how to spread the clouds. My soul is about to burst within me because I know this is the only thing I really know for sure right now. There's so many uncertainties going on. So many uncertainties with, with people's man-made doctrines and everything else. But there's one thing I know for sure after 48 years of ministry that if my people which are called by my name, oh glory to God, I know some of you don't know what that shaking's all about, but if you ever hit a live wire, you're going to shake too. Oh glory to God. Oh hallelujah. There's one thing I know for sure after 48 years of ministry and that is that prayer changes things that if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray I'm talking about your daily prayer I'm talking about you going in your bedroom I'm talking about you going in your yard I'm talking about you getting your family together who can understand the spreading of the clouds oh God oh Lord open up the eyes of our understanding you know that Muslim daddy you know what he'll do that Muslim daddy and you know the sound that he makes when he prays you know who he learned that from that didn't come along till the seven and eight hundreds about the eight and the eight hundreds is when they really started praying like that you know where they got it from they got it from the Christians and the Jews opening up their mouth and that that sound that to heal a sound of prayer oh they got it but you know what that Muslim daddy will do he'll take his little boy he'll put the prayer shawl or whatever it is on the ground the prayer rug but I, I'm sorry I'm uneducated in this but I do know what they do he'll take his little boy right beside him he'll show him how to kneel he'll show him how to rock he'll say when you talk to God this is how you do it oh God help the church help 
the church. Your daddy will show you how to shoot a basketball, show you how to play a game of cards, show you how to ride a horse. If you're lucky, he'll show you how to change a tire. Oh, daddy, don't stop with those things. Show your children how to get a hold of God, how to spread the clouds. Oh, God, help us tonight. Help us to wake up, Lord, and show our children, our children's children, how that we can spread the clouds. Can anyone understand the spreadings of the clouds or the noise, the noise of his tabernacle? The noise of his tabernacle. The noise of his tabernacle. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now we'll go to the Go to the book of Revelation, chapter 8. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation, chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. And when he opened up the seventh seal, There was silence in heaven, angels be quiet, saints be quiet, holy, 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 be still. Because the most important thing that was done on this planet, I'm going to let you hear. And there was silence in heaven for half an hour, 30 minutes. And I saw seven angels which stood before God. And given unto them were seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Having a golden censer. What's everybody listening for? What are they silent for? And with that golden censer. There was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with what? The prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. I'm just going to stop with verse 3 because it gets too intense and too much revelation. Do you know that every time Sound waves never die. That's why I love this old ship of Zion that I'm sitting in. It has the sound waves of old preachers. The sound waves of Harley Hensley who was healed of cancer when a a ray of light from heaven, radiation cut the cancer out of his body. You hear me? Cut it out. And it looked like dried mushrooms and he was given up to die. Oh, but Harley Hensley stood in this platform, preached the message of salvation by grace and healing through the blood of Jesus Christ. Sound waves never die. This house is penetrated with them. It's penetrated. Oh, glory to God. This old ship of Zion has the prayers of Ma'am Shell, of Sister Shell, of Brother Marksbury, of Brother Combs. I could go on and on and on with 67 years of sound waves that are collected in this house. You don't think Satan hates this house? You don't think he hates this ministry? This ministry has been saturated with people who knew how to spread the clouds. But one day, brothers and sisters, every prayer that you've prayed, every tear that you have cried, every word that you have prayed before God sends a blast of judgment upon this earth, he said, I want you to hear the people that stood between the living and the dead I want you to hear the people that 
cried for the lost of the world and the sick and the dying. All of heaven, every angel, every angel's going to have to be silent while the aroma of prayers, every prayer sister shall prayed. My great grandmother's little voice from Clay County, Kentucky is going to be in that incense of prayer. And when God sees that incense of prayer going before the throne, he speaks to the angel, blow that trumpet, send judgment to the earth. I've called my people a prayer and you would not heed and you would not take the warning. I want you to know this is not just something that we're doing here tonight. This is recorded eternally in heaven's throne room of grace. I've got one more scripture. Oh, glory to God. I have it covered near what needs to be covered tonight. But is your faith being increased? I said, is your faith being increased? Do you feel like taking the challenges? Are you growing up enough that you're going to take the torch and you're going to go into the caverns of darkness and you're going to say, Satan, I'm here to get you out of every crevice that's in my life. I want you out of every crevice in my home. I don't want you, no, I'm not talking about being a snoop. I'm not talking about your imagination. I'm talking about in behind closed doors that you take the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit and your torch of the Holy Spirit and you go into the dark, deep caves of wickedness and vile affections. Oh, this is one right here that's going to stir you, stir you, stir you. Zechariah 10 and 1. Oh, glory, Brother Mark, if you'll come. Said, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. And so the Lord shall make lightning bright clouds. And the Lord shall give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. That means more than enough. You hear me tonight. We are in the time of the latter rain. And God says in the time of the latter rain, don't just sit back and enjoy my, the, the blessings I've given you. God's blessed me. My wife and I have subdivided farms, built houses. We've been blessed. I'm not, I'm not any crazy wealthy man, but I'm not bad off either. And you live long enough for God and you quit your smoking and your drinking and spending movies, spending money on filthy movies and everything else that goes on. If the wildest thing you do is go to church and the strongest thing you drink is iced tea, you're already going to get richer. You'll be richer than you ever were because of this great grace of God. Hallelujah. But he said in the time of the latter rain, just ask me. Just ask me. And early this morning, I threw my head back and had a little shouting spell with this good old Baptist song that was sung in the Holiness Church. There shall be showers of blessings. Oh, that today it might fall. Now as to God we're confessing Now as on Jesus we call Oh, showers of blessings Showers showers we plead there shall be showers of blessings send them a 
upon us, O Lord. Oh, grant to us now a refreshing. Come now and honor Showers we plead. Mercy drops round us, they're falling. But for the showers we plead, oh, we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. I'm not exactly sure when the next call to prayer will be. It'll be in January sometimes, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to work it, but you will know. Just stay connected to our website and the other ways you stay connected, of which I do not know. Oh, I tell you what, the Holy Spirit is heavy, 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 heavy. God bless you. We will see you Sunday morning at 1045, Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Remember, I'm having a special prayer. I really think I already got my answer on staying on Christian television or just doing everything through the Internet. Right now we have about 46,000 every weekend in one service. That's our average that's connected to this ministry. I do want to build things here on this property before my time is over. And if my time... If all of our time is coming to a quick close, I want to have my hands so tight on the plow and I want to be right in the middle of working in the harvest when he comes. We love you all. 